Welcome to Everyday Cooking with Anne. Today I'm going to show you how to make best ever apple pudding cake. This is a great recipe to use during the fall and winter season when really good apples are plentiful. And it's a great dessert during the holidays especially. You can make double this recipe to feed a lot of people. Every time I've served this after some kind of a holiday dinner, um, everybody raves over how wonderful it is. And it's kind of like the old fashioned apple pudding or bread pudding that maybe your grandmother or mother used to make, but it's so much easier and you can make it for a crowd as well. So watch what I'm gonna tell you what the ingredients are first. First of all, I wanna show you the dry ingredients. And before I start with what the ingredients are, I'm gonna show you that here, this is my flour bin. And a lot of times uh, recipes call for sifted flour. Most flour is really already sifted before you get it, but if you want to make sure that you sift it properly, and I don't know how properly you have to do it, but I just use my little wire whisk right here in my bin before I take the flour out. And I just go ahead and run the flour through the whisk. And that pretty much does a great job of sifting. So part of uh, our dry ingredients we're going to be using is one cup of Flour, sifted flour, so I'm going to go ahead and measure it like this right out of my bin. And it does measure just perfectly. I'm going to put this in our bowl. Uh, we have also a one half teaspoon of salt. We also have a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg. Right here is ground nutmeg. And we have a whole teaspoon of, I like the Saigon uh, cinnamon. It's the best I've found, and you can get that at Costco too. So one teaspoon of this as well. Okay, those are our dry ingredients. And you can use the little sifter to sift those up and get them ready to go when we put our cake together. Notice there's not too much flour in this cake. Okay, now this recipe is going to use a Oh, and uh, baking soda. How could I forget that? Half a teaspoon of that. Okay, we're going to be using today a eight or nine inch square baking pan, but nine times out of ten, I double this recipe and you can put it in a nice large nine by 13 kind of a deep pan and bake it a little bit longer and it works just perfect. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is show you the next part of preparing your apples. Now I'm using Honeycrisp apples. Before I go on, I wanna correct the seasonings that I said out loud to you because once you see the recipe below, you're thinking, I think she said this. Okay, it's a whole teaspoon of baking soda and a whole half teaspoon of ground nutmeg. Those are the corrections, okay? to the recipe below. Okay, let's go move forward now. We're gonna prepare our apples for um, shredding. And all I do, and these are going to include the apple peel, okay? So all I'm gonna do is core the apple, each one. Okay, now I'm gonna bring these over to my food processor. I've got eight slices and I'm going to put a couple in here. Now I have the shredder, um, the larger shredder on my food processor and I'm going to just start turn this on low. Now you can shred these by hand if you don't have a food processor just as easily just take your your cheese grater that has the bigger grates on it not the small grate, but the bigger grates on it, and just set it in a bowl and shred them. So you're going to have shredded apple. Okay, we're going to wait and put this in the cake in just a moment. Okay, now what we're going to do is come over and start the cake by putting in half a cube of butter, which is a quarter of a cup of butter. So half a cube of butter goes in our mixer. And I'm going to go ahead and put the sugar in, and I'm going to beat that up a little bit here. You want to cream this really well before you add the other ingredients, which is going to be the egg and then the flour. Okay, now I'm going to add the egg because that's well mixed together. There's just one egg. Oh, don't put the eggshell in. There you go. 
Okay, now I'm going to add the um, apples. I'm going to lift this up a little bit so I can add them easily. So these are the two shredded apples. Clean this out. And once again, notice I did not peel these apples. This adds a lot of flavor and texture to your cake. Mix these in with your egg and sugar mixture and butter. Okay, and now I'm going to gradually just add the dry ingredients. Now these apples are like any other vegetable bread or any other thing that you put fresh fruit or vegetables in. It's going to create a lot of moisture in your cake. So it's going to be very dense and delicious. Okay. See, this cake does not take very long to make. And like I mentioned before, if you're going to feed even just, just your family, you may want to double this. And I honestly always double this except this time. Okay, this is what your mixture looks like right here. Getting ready to put it ready. Now, I have already preheated an oven to 350 degrees. This is one of those cakes that's going to take like about 45 minutes. I am going to go ahead and add my uh, chopped walnuts if you're a... Nut fan, the walnuts honestly make this. The walnuts and the apples together is a great combination. So I'm going to add those right now. I'm going to go ahead and take my pan and put my pan spray in here. Generous amount of that so it doesn't stick. I'm going to add my mixture here. Okay, it's all ready to go in the oven. I've got the oven preheating and uh, we'll be back in just a moment because I'm going to teach you how to make the nutmeg sauce that goes on top. It is time to make while the, while the cake is in the oven baking. Um, we're going to be making the um, actual pudding sauce, nutmeg pudding sauce that goes on top of the cake that you drizzle on. It soaks into the cake. It's so yummy. Okay, what we've got in our pan right now is a cube of butter that's still starting to melt on low. It has a uh, one cup of cream and it also has half a cup of cream, I'm sorry, half a cup of cream and an, an entire cup of sugar. Those are the first three ingredients that go in here, so I've got a little bit of cream. The recipe does call for light cream, which tells me it's a regular whipping cream rather than a heavy whipping cream. I have used Whit Heavy all along just because that's what I have on hand. If for some reason you want to use the lighter version, you could use some of, the, some of it as a heavy whipping cream and part of it as a regular cream. But you, the main thing that you want to remember is that we're putting this in here and it will take maybe 10 to 15 minutes to prepare, is that you just want it, you don't want it to boil. So you're going to put it on the lowest heat possible. So I've had this on low for just a minute or two already while the cake is baking. And I'm going to come over and show you how to make regular whipping cream that's going to go on top of the cake. Say so you're going to have your cake, your pudding sauce drizzled over, kind of seeping into the very moist apple cake. And then, of course, a dollop of whipped cream on top. It makes the dessert just amazing. Now, how I make whipping cream, regular whipping cream rather than stabilized whipping cream, I just used a cup of uh, heavy whipping cream, which is what the recipe calls for. You can double this recipe if you like. Uh, I almost always double any recipe when it has whipping cream because I like to use a lot of it. But you already know that about me. Um, so I'm gonna, I've am gonna i gone ahead and whipped this cream up. It's already whipped up. And what you do, the recipe for any whipped cream I use is a cup of whipping cream and a quarter cup of powdered sugar and a teaspoon of vanilla. So if you had two cups of whipping cream, you would want to have a half a cup, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to go ahead and put in the powdered sugar to mix in. I like that much better than uh, granulated sugar as a stabilizer. Makes a much smoother cream. So I'm going to whip that together. Turn it down and I put about a teaspoon. You can see I'm running out of my vanilla. Put about a teaspoon in there. 
Now, if you really want to go fallish, you can add a little bit of sprinkle of cinnamon too. So you can have a cinnamon laced whipped cream if you think that would be really yummy. And on this dessert, it could very well. My sauce is ready. It's um, been on about for 10 minutes. You can see it's a little bit bubbling up now here, but if you want to have a nice thick kind of sauce when it's finished. Now it's a little bit bubbled up because I wanted you to see it. But usually right around the edges is where you'll start seeing a little bit of boiling on the edges and that's when you can turn it off. At this point, you can add your sprinkle dash of nutmeg to your liking. The nutmeg really makes it wonderful. It's delicious. It's just very, just tastes like holidays. But of course you cannot forget your wonderful vanilla extract. Make sure you buy pure vanilla for everything. Otherwise don't even make it. It doesn't even help if it's not. That kind of bubbles up a little bit here in this. I turned off the heat. And your vanilla muck sauce is ready to go. If you, if you need to, uh, make this in advance and you can put it on the stove and just on very low reheat it because you want to put warm nutmeg sauce on the cake. A cake on the other hand, when we take this out of the oven, we want to cool it first before we actually serve it, okay? So you want the hot nutmeg sauce on top of the cooled cake and of course whipped cream on top of that. Okay, we'll get back and show you in a little bit the cake with the nutmeg sauce and the cream. Okay, we have our apple pudding cake ready to serve. You can see in the smaller pan that I made it in, it makes uh, about nine servings. I've already taken one serving out. You can see what it looks like. It's full of nuts and it's very moist and very, very ready to eat. It's very apple smelling too. It smells good in the kitchen. This is our, this is our pudding sauce. You can see it's just perfect, ready to go on top. I'm going to just take some of this and drizzle this right on top. Yes, this is a little bit decadent, but it is the holidays. If you want a little bit more, put it on. And then of course, um, whipped cream on top of that. I always like extra whipped cream. It just makes it really special. And then now you're ready to serve your guests.